All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kev. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 89. And today I will be proposing a new hypothesis for the missing component that appears to have been removed from the upper reaction vault of the secondary aeroformer inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell. Like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel. Check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And here are the housings inside the upper reaction vault of the Red Pyramid's second chamber, otherwise known as the secondary air reformer. As presented in previous site visits to the Red Pyramid here on the channel, this image showing the two housings on the western wall. And there are a series of six total bilateral housings with three on each side of the chamber. This image here showing the two housings on the eastern wall. These four housings are the largest of the six. And then there are two smaller bilateral housings located just outside the opening of the connecting shaft leading from the second chamber upper reaction vault into the final synthesis chamber, one of which you can see here on the western wall. And there is one more hole located here, making a total of seven. And the explanation that is provided for this particular hole is that it was used to tie a rope, which allowed explorers to access the final chamber. But upon further inspection, I noticed that there is the same staining emanating from this hole that is covering the inside of all of these reaction chambers. The metallic chemical analysis of which has been proven in a three-part series here on the channel, link in the video description below. And the chisel marks inside of this hole removed some of that staining, indicating that the hole is actually a part of the original construction. If this was a relatively modern hole, let's say from the early 1900s, this entire hole would be pristine, exposed, chiseled out limestone from when the hole was excavated. But that is not at all how it appears. So now I will put in a clip so you can see the configuration of this housing system up close in person. All right, and now we are here on the sixth and seventh tier of the upper reaction chamber. And you can see these housings that I showed in the previous episode. and the chisel marks from the process of removing a component out of those housings. And I will be following up on a hypothesis about this removed component in an upcoming research episode. And you can see the significant amount of staining emanating from and around these excavated housings. And this area in particular has the darkest staining. You can see here leading into the connection passage 
from the secondary aeroformer into the final synthesis chamber. And in my last Sunday site visit inside the Red Pyramid, we concluded with these housings here, which also appear to have been chiseled out. You can see some chisel marks going down in here, and there's a area here. And the chisel marks appear to be fresh. on top of the stains and removing the stains, which would be an indication. The stains were there first. The chisel marks were produced in the process of removing whatever was in here. So we have a series of Housings here, one and two, directly across from each other in the second reaction chamber on the sixth tier, here and here. This is the second set here and here. So there are four holes inside of this chamber, which is incorrectly depicted on almost every single diagram of the Red Pyramid. They have the configuration completely wrong in terms of these housings. So again, two here, and two here. Then, on the seventh tier, we have a housing here, connecting passage, and another housing here. And these two small housings are directly across from each other as well. On the seventh tier. And then we have this, which is a curved hole going in through here. See here the terminations here and here. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out the landofchem.com. I have some brand new merch. This is the sixth degree green lion logo representing ferrous sulfate standing on top of a diagram of Newgrange in Ireland. There's also the fifth degree logo, an image of the central pyramid of Giza featuring the alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid. The recently released second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this gorgeous new Egyptian blue edition, all now available at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just check out the website and thank you all so much. All right, now that you have seen the housings, remember that the diagrams of the Red Pyramid, this one here adapted from the original schematic by Frank Monnier, incorrectly show the configuration of these housings. You can see here that there are seven indicated in the primary reaction chamber. And I have shown in all of my site visits to the Red Pyramid that unless these holes have been covered up to the point that they are now invisible, these seven holes do not exist. And you just saw that the one, two, three holes that are shown here are actually only two holes with a smaller set right near the connecting shaft that are never shown on any diagram. And this one here on the northern side does not exist. So now that we understand the configuration of the housings, I am proposing that these holes once housed a system of baffles that facilitated the chemical reaction process inside of this chamber. Specifically to promote the unidirectional airflow of the reactant gases into the upper vault and through the connecting shaft into the final synthesis chamber. Now, at this point, I have to say that any hypotheses regarding these missing components will remain in the realm of speculation 
because whatever was in here has now been removed and is forever lost to the sands of time. However, I do think that this is the most reasonable hypothesis for the function of these housings and for this missing component. And there are a variety of different designs for this baffle system that could be possible. And you can see here these perforated baffles within a heat exchanger. And here, some dynamics modeling showing the airflow through this type of baffle system. And here, they are evaluating the differences between these two different shapes of baffles. This one at the top being a rectangular shape, and this one down here at the bottom being more of a tapered design. And the possibilities are endless for how this system was originally designed and configured within the Red Pyramid's second chamber. And as I have stated before, this is where software like Comsol, a multi-physics modeling program, would come in very handy. And yes, I have spoken with the engineers at this company, and they were thrilled about the idea of testing the function of the Egyptian pyramids using their software, but they explained that it was not designed for rebuilding structures made out of stone. And by now, I hope you understand that the stone was an immense part of how these structures operated. And you can see here a heat exchanger with a baffle system and the tremendous amount of heat inside this area of the component. Well, it just so happens that the area surrounding these housings inside of the secondary air is the area with the most intense staining within the entire structure. And this staining is a direct indication of the intensity of the chemical reaction dynamic around this component, specifically the fluctuations of high temperature and pressures. But this is not the only area within the Red Pyramid where it appears that something may have been removed. And I also think that a component may have been extracted from the final synthesis chamber as well, as evidenced by the massive excavated pit at the bottom and the intentional removal of stones to enlarge the connecting shaft here. They had to make room to take whatever was inside of here out of the reaction chamber. And yes, of course, I do have some ideas of what that component could be, which I am currently researching and will be the subject for a future video. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 89, Missing Components from the Red Pyramid. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 17, featuring a journey inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, featuring some exclusive footage from inside of the Queen's Chamber and an exploration of the Giza Plateau surrounding the structure. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.